Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. The conversation about the electronic transmission of election results ahead of the 2023 elections has remained a subject of debate. Now, INEC has published a 25-page position paper and basically say that it is ready um, for e-transmission of results. Let's invite public affairs analyst Mr. Ezekiel Iyaitok um, for more on this. Good morning, Mr. Iyaitok. Good morning and nice Thank you for joining us. Now, we know that the debate about uh, whether INEC can conduct elections and transmit results electronically has been a big one, with the National Assembly wading in, asking INEC to go ahead and, you know, consult with the NCC. So my first question is this. Um, is it that the National Assembly has no faith in INEC's capability to transmit election results electronically or that they have no respect for INEX independence? I, I think that uh, in all honesty, um, the truth is known to every Nigerian. And that truth is that, unfortunately, the National Assembly is, uh, I would use the word, afraid of facing the reality that if things are done properly, it might um, be not productive to them because they are not used to things being done properly. I say this with every sense of responsibility because everybody knows that the most transparent approach to any endeavor is electronic. So the question is, do you have the capacity to do it? And it is very clear, I look at some time and time again, they have also demonstrated it here at there that they have the capacity. So what's the problem? No, uh, Mr. Ayatok, I, I, I would like us, because we are very likely going to be speaking with the um, 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 Festus Okoye this morning. Um, but I want yeah. you, know, you to share you know, what, what your definition of electronic voting is. Is it really just the transmission of results? Or is there a possibility that there can actually be electronic voting uh, that don't necessarily require, um, you know, being at a polling unit? Is it, when we go into electronic voting, we are taking it much higher. We can't talk about um, the university without talking about the second school or primary school. The primary school is electronic transmission of results because electronic voting is um, a lot more complicated, and uh, um, there is a sharp consensus on that for now. But there is a definite national consensus of electronic transmission of results. It's been done before, and if you know what goes on, I need to have a portal. On that portal, they can actually. Um, display the result. But the challenge is that that result is not tenable in court because the law talks about manual transmission and uh, manual polling and not manual uh, electronic pollution. I don't know if you get that. I think those have everything that they need, absolutely all that they need for them to be able to um, get the results from the polling unit, transmit the results to their server. They do have a server. They have all those things. They have tested all of them. It works perfectly. But the challenge is that you cannot take that which is on their server and go to uh, any litigation or any sort of law because that particular aspect is not recognized by law. So what I make is say is let the National Assembly give them also that particular section so that they are allowed to both manually and electronically transmit results. That's where the challenge is right now. Mm. So, Mr. E.I. Turk, what sort of an yeah. impact do you think the electronic transmission of results might have on Nigeria's, you know, election results management? Oh, that, 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 um, that, 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 that,
today. You see, I've been involved in two elections. And, <laughs> well, let me not go into detail. What you have at the polling unit, which is the authentic result, is a child's flow compared to what you have at the collation center. At the collation center, two things happen. The first thing is that they can just add a zero and it makes all the difference. And they can also subtract just one figure from the opponent and it makes all the difference. That's number one. Number two is that when you go and do accreditation, and assuming that the polling unit had about um, 700 registered um, voters, and it so happens that they only release the form for 300. It means that there is additional force that these people can just go to somewhere and do terrible some printing. Mm. And then so you discover that somebody that had 100 now has one of the club 400 which becomes 500 as opposed to the second opponent who has got 200 out of the 200. I don't know if you get all the things. Yes, we do. So, but if we had allowed it to remain electronic transmission, it means that that 300 that was transmitted from the polling unit is the final figure. So it leaves no room for all those some printing and manipulation. Those are two extremely important determinants of, of, um, of, of, of election results. So those are the issues. I let me say, we want to be able to have elections that we are happy with. And that the only way we can do is to eliminate this problem that happens at the probation center. And that is where our national assembly, unfortunately, is uncomfortable with. But we are not going to let that be. Because yeah. without free expected elections, we will never make progress in this country. And the good people that want to get into elections and minor offices will not be encouraged to. So we are not going to allow them. We are going to write our citizens and put a demand on them for them to do the right thing. Talk about the personality. Well, Mr. That's Yantok. why, like on the 1st of October, there's going to be a consensus of citizens on this electronic transmission of results. And I let the National Assembly talk at the people that have been lined up. The thing they are going to get our tri-state meeting. They will be shocked at who and who are going to talk because enough has got enough. Well, Ms. Ayatok, you know, I'm just going to, you know, go back to the National Assembly now. There's a story that says um, a, a particular senator, Yusuf Ali, had said that, you know, the electronic transmission of result, uh, result uh, conversation must be revisited um, in the build-up to the elections. Um, you know, but I, I want you to go on with sharing your thoughts on why it seems the National Assembly is crying more than the bereaved. If INEC has said that they will be capable of, you know, electronic transmission of results, what exactly is the National Assembly on, on, on about? Uh, my brother, truth is bitter. But if we are going to make progress as a nation, we must be willing to face this bitter truth. You and my sister said know that the people in elective office are not the best in hand. We know that. Why is this so? Let me give you a very, very classic um, example of what it is. In the last election, over 80 million Nigerians looked at the vote. Out of over 80 million, about 30 million actually went out to vote. Now, it is easy for us to be lazy intellectually and just But let us, for once, think about it. Think through this process. Why did over 65% of Nigerians refuse to go out? I will tell you two reasons. 
Number one, if a man is asked to prove the, the rock and the hard thing, and he says, I don't have to do it. That's number one. Talk about the candidate. But the worst is the prospect. You know that these people will announce what they want to announce. So why do you bother yourself? Let them just go ahead and announce. First, if you solve that second problem first, say people know that their votes are going to count. Two things happen. Number one is that those people that are not just eligible but suitable, those people that know that they keep the offices involved, they will come out. Secondly, the citizens will now have a robust choice to make. So, by the time we are able to make this process to be credible, 90% of the people in elective offices will not be there. How do you expect them? It's called the law of self preservation. How do you expect them to be feeling and excited about going to change the process so that it is free, fair, and transparent, credible, where it knows that it's going to be against their self interest? I think the time it has come, then we Nigerians, the citizens, should just come out and demand. And that's what we have decided to do. And we are going to put constant pressure on government from 1st of October to whenever it's needed. This country belongs to us, it doesn't belong to them. It belongs to all of us. So, Mr. Yentok, you've been mentioning this thing about October 1st and I suppose yeah. rally, you know, in support of this. But what can you say generally about public support for e transmission of results in Nigeria? It is overwhelming. As a matter of fact, this is one consensus that Mr. President can ride on and so that he has over 99.9% .9 of Nigeria. We are sick and tired. We've become the poverty capital of the world. People are losing their jobs. People are losing it. They are losing their minds, not just their self-help. Because we are bringing engineers to the cockpit. No. Politicians are like engineers. They keep the aircraft. And when they finish, the pilots are trained to operate the aircraft. That line has to be done. Governance has to be cerebral. Governance has to be for the best treated people. And not a reward process. Oh, it is our son. Oh, it's not their son. What's that? When Nigeria wanted to win the World Cup, they removed a Nigerian called here and went to Germany to bring a man to come and uh, look at the to come and be a coach because we wanted to win. On the last match that we had against Cameroon, about eight of the eleven players were from the southeast. We didn't care. We just wanted to win. And we won and we qualified and the world nation was happy. In fact, today Nigerians don't care where they come from, north, south, east or west. They just want the right person that can come. The economy, handle the security, handle corruption. That's all we want. We don't care where you come from. You like come from President Dapo. If I think we can beg Obama to come and be a president, and the condition would allow, I, I'll be good for it. Well, no, um, the most I'm also um, sure in today's Nigeria, there you know, there's a lot of conversations about you know where the next president uh, should come from. Um, and I'm, I'm sure that a lot of people may not agree with the. We don't care where you come from, uh, narrative. But I, I want us to move into talking about voter registration now. Um, INEX online process is currently suspended. The next uh, set starts, I think, on the 4th of October. Uh, that's when the second uh, stage of our online registration will begin. Um, Mr. Ayatok, I want your views on what the numbers are currently looking like. It's just about 1.8 million, I think, that have been fully registered. Um, it's still a long way to go if we're, if we're planning on having uh, more and more people register to vote by 2023. Uh, do you see or do you think that there is, you know, possibility that Nigeria will be able to meet up with record-breaking figures with regards to registered voters um, in 2023? Uh, pretty interesting question there. But sadly, we lost Mr. Awesome. Yetok at, at this time. Um, really can't wait, you know, to get that INEX um, head to come in to really clarify some of these issues because it, it seemed like a pretty authoritative piece. INEC really putting its foot down to say we can 
transmit results electronically. I mean, they, they went on to talk about how they've been using um, basically SMS systems to message people, how they've been working with mobile network operators all the yeah. while, how they even went ahead to do the online um, election registration to say that we are capable of doing this. INEC also mentioned in that paper that for the past 10 years, they have been conducting research into this area and have authoritatively you know, the statement that, that they say that they can conduct elections and transmit it electronically. So the bone of contention here is what's stopping them. Mr. Nieto, glad to have you back. Uh, sadly, we lost him again. Um, but really, we, we know that Nigeria's electoral process has really been marred by corruption. Corruption basically because of ballot snatching and things like that. So that's why proponents of this system believe that uh, it's something that can mitigate all those challenges. But people also bring up the issues of hacking to say, oh, that's a possibility that you know, people can hack into the system, people can manipulate the results and all of that. But really, that's why we need to hear from the source, really explain just what the challenges are with this electronic transmission of results and what are the plans of INEC to mitigate them? Because we need to have these facts on the table to decide what exactly do we do next. And exactly with the National Assembly, how can INEC bring them over to their side, um, especially with the NCC as well and other mobile network operators? Because I believe that for this to be resolved, everybody really has to speak in one voice and be on the same page, don't you think? Yeah, yeah I'm mostly concerned you know, about um, the level of interest um, with regards to the electoral process. Yes, the National Assembly will do what they can. Um, INEC also has its role, but the Nigerian people, the electorate, you know, and how many more people are interested. Um, and, you know, it's something we probably need to look into and see if there's more people who, at this point, don't want to even bother themselves, or there's more people that really want to be involved in the process. Um, because you're not going to be sending electronic, um, uh, sending results electronically of nobody. Who voted, has to be yeah. People, exactly. They have to be people who are really, really interested. And a number of states on the 6th of November is going to be, you know, um, a very clear picture of what the South East might look like in 2023 with regards to the election. But we'll, we'll get there. Um, Ms. Ayantok, welcome back. Thank you. All right, I was speaking earlier, I was asking you about your thoughts with regards to INEX registration of voters. Online registration has, is currently suspended. It's going to be um, um, starting again on the 4th of October. Um, but what's your thoughts, or what are your thoughts really on the level of interest, you know, that you've seen with Nigerians registering um, to vote um, and, of course, you know, getting themselves ready for 2023? Um, the numbers so far, you know, just a little above 1 million that have been fully registered by INEC. There's 3 million plus that, you know, have started the process that hopefully would be concluded pretty soon. Um, but are these numbers impressive enough or do you think that Nigerians could have done better? Um, I don't know if it's but now it's a little challenging. But let me, I think you're talking in terms of the uh, online registration that INEC was doing. If, yes, uh, online uh, and general. Line, uh, I love that uh, line of thought. If you show, if I let show you the, the response uh, in the sense that if they gave you the, the analysis, you know, you realize that when there was this, we had that we are going to have this um, electronic transmission of the vote. the president, uh, the National Assembly uh, was. Uh, uh, amendment, electoral act amendment. There was we started to like um uh the the dialogue you know to lose confidence in like oh Lord oh, oh. Um, it's happening all over. And I think that um This is clear that when the working system is going to be free, fair, transparent, credible elections. So, the in this case, the people of the registration, understandably, uh, because of a number of elections and all that, has given on time to, to raise up the people again. So, by the time the portals are opened again, we are going to find a, a, a form, a, a kind of a rush of people because we told us here and the time has come when we can back with what we want. Office of the citizen is the highest office in the land. So we cannot afford the luxury of just 
sitting down and we are working with Mojudi at home. We've done that for too long. And then we're now saying that no, not again. Or uh, henceforth, we're going to put it. <laughs> demand our rights and get our rights as citizens. All right, Mr. Yetok, um, we know that this electronic transmission of results seems like the ideal right now. I mean, when we look at all the challenges, manual transmission of results, and see, you know, how this electronic transmission seems to remedy those challenges, you know, it seems ideal. But let's be honest, Nigeria is yet to achieve 100% internet penetration. So in those places where internet services are limited or even unavailable, what should INEC do in those places? And is it that there's going to be e-transmission of results in some places and manual in others? And how do we bridge that gap? Now, I, 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 I wish people would hear me and hear me very, very loud and clear. Two things I want to say with respect to Number one is that ACNEC has authenticated. They have authenticated that they have a minimum of 93 in context of, of Nigeria. They have. They have made that clear in official documents. So, number one. Number two, the technology is like text message. It does not have to be instant. When you have infused a text and press the text button, if your network is not there at that time, you cannot retrieve that message. You see? What happens is that as you move towards the coalition center, before you arrive there, you have arrived at the top. The message goes. So nobody is disenfranchised. The worst case scenario is that the distance between where you are or the distance between where you are and where you are, the network area, which could be which could be one hour, depending on the distance where you are going to, your, your message goes. So nobody, people don't really know this fact. So nobody is disenfranchised. No. The worst case scenario is that there is a delay of maybe one hour or two hours. And so, message in a country where after three days, you are still trying to find out how to protect your results and carry from point A to point they is it waiting for two hours that is happening. All right. Ms. Ayana Talk, thank you very much for uh, joining us and for, of course, uh, sharing your views on uh, this very, very important discussion Thanks. It's been a pleasure uh, being on this morning. Morning. I couldn't, You couldn't see my face, but I, I'm, I'm cool with that. Absolutely fine. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. The conversation we've been having is about the electronic transmission of results and INEC's recent stance saying that they have the capacity um, to transmit election results electronically. We have Festus Okoye joining us via phone. Good morning, Mr. Okoye. Yeah, good morning. Okay, so this debate has been on for a while now, but INEC finally released that paper saying that they do have the capability to transmit results electronically. Please put the facts and evidence before us regarding how much preparations and research that INEC has done to show that they can indeed transmit results electronically? Well, you know, to the end of the 2019 general election, uh, the commission has conducted um, 27 by elections. And this, some of these by elections uh, revolves around the um, uh, governorship election. We had a governorship election in uh, Edo State. We also had a governorship election in uh, Ondo State. And we uploaded the results of the two units into our INEC resolve being portal. And in all these other uh, places where we conducted this election, uh, we also did the same thing. Um, so, so the implication is that we have proved to the Nigerian people uh, conclusively that we have the capacity to transmit uh, election results uh, electronically. And, and as you can see, we have also made it very clear that um, we had a discussion with the NCC uh, in 2018. And as at that particular period, it was made clear that 93% of our fully units we are covered by the major network. And so the issue is not whether we have the capacity. We have proved that we have the capacity to transmit election results. And we have also 
demonstrated that capacity in some of the by elections that we have had in Nigeria. Okay, now, now let's talk about the 93% you just mentioned. What then is the plan for the other, well, 7% of your um, uh, you know, polling units that may not um, have, of course, internet penetration? What then would be done for those areas? Well, the, the major network operators, especially ATL, uh, MTN, uh, Glow Mobile, and uh, Nine Mobile, assured the commission uh, that uh, the seven percent was not an issue, was not a problem, and we had also um, agreed on the on the costing uh, for them to uh, cover the uh, remaining seven seven percent. But as you know, this thing was. Uh, something that was done in 2018, and that's almost three or four years ago. And today, the level of internet penetration has increased. Uh, the, the, the robust nature of uh, our mobile networks has also in increased. And so we are confident that if the same uh, uh, procedure was applied today, we won't have any major challenge at all. Moreover, you know that um, we expanded our, our, our pulling units. And when we carried out this expansion, we determined the coordinates of all our pulling units. And we used the mobile networks to determine this, this, this coordinates. And so the issue of uh, transmitting election results uh, electronically is really not an issue. Moreover, we have made it clear that Section 78 and Section 118 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria gives us the leeway, gives us the right uh, to make a determination on how to conduct elections in Nigeria. Our challenge is not whether we have the power or the right or the virus to transmit election results. Our, what we are saying is that we need the National Assembly uh, to amend Section 63 and Section um, 67 of the Electoral Act, which prescribes manual collation and manual transmission of election results to enable us carry out the innovations we have introduced, to enable us transmit election results and collect them uh, 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 electronically. So that is where the challenge is, and that is where the, where the issues are. Fantastic. Mr. Okoye, if, like you've said, the Constitution gives you the mandate to carry out election results independently, and all you're simply asking is for an amendment to this Constitution to allow you now do that electronically, why do you think there's just such an opposition from the National Assembly, you know, against INEC conducting elections um, and, of course, transmitting them electronically? Well, I, I think that some of the opposition are born out of uh, partis partisan political interests. Hmm. Uh, some of them revolves around lack of uh, adequate and clear, info uh, and clear information uh, relating to um, uh, what, what we intend to do. And some of them uh, just uh, uh, revolves around the fear of what the commission is, is, is up to. You know that we have been um, very innovative as a commission. We have introduced um, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 a political party's nomination portal through which political parties upload the list and personal particulars of their nominated candidates electronically. We have also done that for civil society groups and organizations, and we have also done that for the media. And we have also uh, used the zipper to upload a pulling unit resource. And now, uh, as you are aware, we have introduced the PIVAS, uh, which will enable us uh, to um, um, carry out accreditation uh, using the fingerprints and the facials of, um, of, 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 of the voters and increasing the level of transparency and preventing identity theft at the level of the pulling unit. So I think it is fear uh, of those who, uh, fear on the part of those uh, who have been manipulating the electoral system for so long and believe that if INEC introduces um, more innovations and improves more technology into the electoral process, our elections will become more transparent and they will not be in a position uh, to do some of the things that they, have been, they are used to doing. Um, Mr. Okoye, I also want you to quickly speak on, you know, those who also have doubts with regards to e-transmission of results and those who say that, you know, or who ask, rather, right, is there a possibility that false figures can also be sent electronically? Um, how, how is INEC going to ensure that this is, an, this is not possible? Well, you know, it's, it's all these issues, we have um, sorted it out with the mobile, mobile network operators. And we have also done internet uh, uh, penetration tests and also the, tested the robustness of, of, our, uh, of our systems using those you call ethical hackers and so on. And so we have uh, covered the issue of um, uh, security in, in relation to some of these systems. Now, what we are saying is that if you look at the trajectory, the configuration 
of our elections. Our elections is organized on a step-by-step -step basis. At the level of the pulling units, you, um, you, you sort out the, the, the scores of the candidates and the votes of, uh, of the political parties and, and enter them manually into from EC8A. And then the presiding officer stamps, signs, and then the pool agents will also sign. And it is also carried manually, transmitted manually to the next level of collation, which is the RA collation. And it goes uh, from there, you have um, uh, the returning officers who will make those announcements. That is what we are saying should be changed to enable us uh, um, do these things electronically and, and nothing more. Okay. Um, Mr. Okoye, I want us to be honest, you know, about this particular situation. What really are the challenges, the underlying challenges with the e-transmission of results as you're aware right now? And if you say there are no challenges, are you saying to Nigerians that if these sections are amended in the constitution and you go ahead to transmit results electronically 2023, it will go off without a hitch? I, I, will, never, I will never say that um, there won't be any challenge with uh, the issue of uh, transmission of election results and that every election we got, go out without a hitch. I, I will not be honest in making that particular assertion. The only thing technology can assist you uh, in terms of conducting a good election, but technology alone cannot guarantee free, uh, fair, and, tra and transparent elections in, 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 Niger in Nigeria. We have been test running and piloting electronic transmission of results for, over, for, for a 10 year period. And we believe that uh, we, we have the courage, uh, that we have the capacity to now take it to a national level. But if we are given the power, if the law is amended, we will start with smaller elections in terms of test running some of these things so that if there are challenges here and there, we can obviate those challenges and then take care of those challenges. For instance, um, uh, the beavers. We are going to use the beavers in Anambra State, but we have to go to Isoko, uh, uh, state, uh, Isoko um, South One State Constituency Election to do a test run and look at the challenges we may likely encounter. And we have taken care of some of those challenges, and we are now going to deploy it to Anambra. So if we are given the leeway, we will use smaller elections, uh, to do real-time test, test run, and then see whether there are uh, uh, issues we need to take care of. And then we take care of those issues before we get to the 2023 general election, because it's dangerous uh, to introduce a new innovation using a very, very big election. And I think this particular commission is um, very, very rational and reasonable. And we normally do test run, real-time test run, uh, before we deploy at the national level. All right, uh, Professor Sukoyi, final question. Um, if you can, as briefly as possible, share with us uh, what the current status is with um, online registration, uh, voter registration. And um, I believe it's also going to be resuming on the 4th of October. Um, how are, or is INEC encouraging more people to um, register online? Yes, yeah, so we are encouraging more people to register online. And um, I, I think that it has been a very, very wonderful experience. Uh, this is the first time um, any electoral management body in Africa is being online for that registration. And the youths have been massively patronizing the online on, online portal. And we believe that um, at the end of the day, uh, the youths are going to form the majority of those who are going to um, be registered voters in relation uh, to this continuous voters registration. Uh, so I, I, we are making progress and we are very, very excited at uh, what is going on. Professor Sukoye, Head of Voter Education, thank you very much for your time this Monday morning. And we wish you a very interesting week ahead. Thank you very much for coming. I really appreciate it. So you heard it from the horse's mouth there, Fester Sukoye, head of voter education at INEC, saying that they do indeed have the capacity to go ahead and transmit election results electronically. And all they're asking is for amendments in certain aspects of the constitution to go ahead and do so. Uh, but we'll see how the National Assembly um, eventually yeah. you know, makes that decision. But that's it on The Breakfast here today. Thank you very much for being a part of our day from 7 a.m. this morning. If you missed out on any part of our conversation, we're at Plus TV Africa everywhere on social media. Absolutely. And uh, we wish you a very interesting Monday and a beautiful week ahead. We'll be back here again tomorrow. I am Osao Gye Ogbon. And I am Aneta Felix. <laughs>